Oh my goodness. This is the furthest east I've ever been. I've never been in India before. Uh, the last champion was Israel for me, so it's, we keep on going. Hey, there it is. Thank you. Um, my name is Kent C. Dodds, and I am in India, and I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> um, so this talk is titled The Web's Next Transformation. I'm going to talk about the history of how we've built apps for the web and um, talk about the next transformation that we have in front of us. Um, if you have heard of me, then you probably know about Epic React and TestingJavaScript.com. And yeah, raise your hand if you've used either of those. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. You all are great. I'm so happy. And because you're cheering, that's actually really good. So you liked it. So <laughs> that's good. Um, I'm working on something new. So I am working on epicweb.dev, uh, where I'm going to take everything that's in my brain and put it on uh, a course. So if you thought Epic React was big, like this is enormous. Uh, and it's going to take a long time. And I'm live streaming the whole thing. So you go to my YouTube channel. You can watch me build everything, um, which will be um, probably a little boring sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I'm really excited about it. So. Before we get too far into things, um, I always like to start my talks off with getting us moving because I think that's important to get oxygen into the brain. But I'm looking at you all and you're like pretty close to each other and so doing my regular air squats is not going to work here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do the wave, right? But you're not going to stand up because I don't want anybody getting hurt. So just your arms. And we're going to start here, and then we'll go this way, and then I'll have you come back this way, and that's it. Okay? Ready? Go! Woo! And on the way back. Woo! <laughs> All right, there we go. Hopefully that got a little bit of blood going in, into your veins. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, that is the wrong slide. Here we go. Um, this talk is uh, heavily influenced by my friend Ryan Florence, who gave a talk at Render ATL called What the Form. It was a really good talk. Um, and he, I believe that he's planning on uh, writing a blog post about it soon as well. Uh, so you can go reference that in the future. Um, it's a journey through the t uh, time as a web developer. How many of you have been doing this uh, web development stuff for over a decade? Yeah, OK, so this will be like kind of a walk down memory lane for some of you. Um, I'm sorry for whatever pain you feel, because um, <laughs> it used to be, well, it used to be different. It wasn't necessarily harder, but it was quite different. Um, yeah, we're going to look at lots of code. Um, I was planning on live, uh, on live coding a lot of this, but there's just way too much. So we're going to just explore uh, pre-written code, and we'll talk about it. Um, and we're not going to be comprehensive at all um, because there's just too much. So we're going to summarize uh, here a bit. So this is the journey. This is uh, over a decade ago um, from uh, the time, ever since Form was invented, uh, we've been building web applications. And um, when we first got started, we were building multi-page apps. Now that's MPAs. And then, around 2003, somebody came up with the idea of progressive enhancement. And uh, we progressively enhanced our applications to make them better. Um, and we'll look at what that looks like. We lovingly refer to that as JavaScript sprinkles. We sprinkled JavaScript on top of uh, what our server rendered so that we could give the user a nicer experience. Uh, and then we went into the single pa page app era, which is where we are now. Uh, primarily. Most of us are working on single page apps. How many of you would describe the app you're working on as a single page app? Okay, like client side routing. If you're using React, you're probably um, talking about a single page app. So um, that's the era that we're in right now, and we're entering a new uh, transition, a new phase of web development, and we're going to look at what that phase is. So we're going to play a little game called Follow the Code. Because in every single one of these uh, transitions, every single one of these phases, we've, um, had a, we're, we're going to take a, um, an, a single app and have it re-implemented in each one of these phases. So for those use cases to be supported, 
that code has to exist somewhere. Somebody wrote the code to make that thing happen. And so uh, we're going to be looking at uh, who wrote the code, uh, where it's written, and where it's run. Okay? So from like where it's written as far as like what file it's in um, and where it's run. Okay, so with that, I've got um, our first implementation of this app. How many of you recognize this app? Yeah, to do MVC. Thank you for helping me see that React is better than Angular. No, just kidding. Um, but that's that's really what it was about. That's what uh, what we got to do MVC for was to compare these different frameworks. And uh, now I'm using it to compare these different implementations of um, of how we used to build web applications. So one thing I. I'm going to turn us on a fast 3G connection so we can see a little bit of network latency, but not, not a lot. Um, well, actually, first, I'm just going to say um, speak at Re uh, React India. <laughs> so um, that, yeah, the app does like what you would expect. Uh, I can check off these. I can toggle them all, toggle them all off. Uh, I can see the active ones and the completed ones and all of that. Um, and this, this is the way that it, it works for all of our implementations. So this is a multi-page app. And so what that means is that the server sends HTML, and it renders forms, and then uh, the user uh, does its interactions. And those forms actually are a full page reload. And so when I'm on a fast 3G connection, you'll notice the favicon up here is uh, spinning, and um, uh, I get a full page refresh for any of these mutations. So uh, you don't actually need any client-side JavaScript here. If I filter this down to JS files, yeah, no, no JavaScript being loaded on this page because the, um, in the early days of the web, we didn't really have or think uh, or care much about um, client-side JavaScript. And so um, the, the entire application works without, without that. Um, and the browser is able to take uh, these changes, eat lunches, if that's a thing. Uh, it's able to take these changes and serialize the form that is submitting this data into a payload, and that payload is sent off to the server where the server can do something and then send the user somewhere else or, or to the page they came from, uh, and it renders new HTML. So the way that this is implemented for our first app here so we have this server.js. And actually, let, I'm going to stick this down here so we can keep track of what we're keeping track of. So we're first looking for our data persistence. Uh, so for this implementation, the data persistence lives in db.js. Um, and it, you could imagine this is an actual database, but to simplify things, I just put it all in memory. Uh, so we just export a bunch of async functions, and this would be your ORM. Um, how many of you are using Prisma? Anybody using Prisma? I, I love Prisma. It's an amazing ORM. Highly recommend it. Um, and so this, for me, would all just be like Prisma interactions. It could also be uh, other requests to like downstream services, too. So you could be calling into, uh, when I was at PayPal, we had our, like, we, our back end was kind of like a back end for the front end. And then we just called other services to persist in things. But it all lives here. It's all on the server um, in this DBJS file. Uh, okay, so for our routes, if we come down here, this is an express app, and so we have our routes all defined right here. So we have a uh, get route for the to-dos page, uh, and then a to-do slash filter, because when I switch between these t um, different pages, um, my, route, my URL route up here gets uh, changed for that. Uh, and it actually doesn't make too much of a difference, because we have logic in our render app function that determines which to-dos should be shown. And then uh, we also are accepting post requests at both of those URLs because we have forms. And when the user submits the form, it's going to make a post request. Uh, we've set that to method post. Uh, and then we, we just redirect everything else to, to do's because this app is kind of small. So uh, that's our routes for data fetching. If we go into this render app, uh, we've got our to do's right there. So this render app actually kind of looks a, like sort of like a React component. You've got your uh, function here, uh, your props-ish. <laughs> and then uh, you're returning your HTML. In this case, I've got this handy little extension that'll turn uh, this code, like block of uh, template literal into HTML. It like, formats it and everything. It's amazing. Um, but there's nothing special here. It's literally just a template string. Back in the day, we used to use, um, I, I used Jade, which is now Pug. 
how many people used Jade back in the day? Yeah, good old Jade. Uh, there's also Mustache and various other template libraries. And often, especially uh, er, over a decade ago, we didn't use JavaScript on the server, uh, at least not for this sort of uh, use case. We would use some, just about anything else. Um, a lot of people were just like, anything but JavaScript, please. Uh, now, now these days, we're all looking, how can I use more JavaScript in my life? Um, but uh, now, with modern JavaScript, we got these template literals. And so I don't need a template library. It's actually quite nice. Um, and then inside of here, for my mutation logic, um, I've got forms. So here's uh, this form. Its method is put or, or post. Uh, fun fact, um, the browser does not support anything other than get or post in a form method. You can't put delete, you can't put post or, or put or uh, any you know, patch or options. Like what would it do with options? I don't know. Uh, so you can't put those different methods. It's only get and post. Uh, so we've got our uh, post here for this form. This is for creating a new one. When you hit enter, it, it submits the form. And you'll notice also we have a hidden input in here. Um, hidden inputs were uh, a lot more common than they are now, um, back in those days, where you would have some mechanism to send additional data other than what the user has typed. And so for us, um, we're using this intent value to uh, tell our backend what we're actually trying to accomplish, because all of these forms are posting to the same URL. So we need to disambiguate. You might also instead say um, action equals some URL. And then you could just have each one handle its own, uh, be its own route. Uh, but in this case, I actually really like this, because it means that I can ha uh, have all the logic for this particular page inside of this handle form post. So when there's a post request, then I'm going to get my form body. This is serialized as a URL encoded string. Um, and I'm using the express middleware to, to turn that into this body. Uh, and then based on the intent, I know what to do. And so this is where the mutation is happening. So again, all of this is happening on the server. There is mutation stuff happening on the client, and that, uh, that code lives inside the browser. The browser is the one serializing the form when the user submits uh, the data. So we didn't have to write that code. That code was written by browser implementers. But we are writing the code for uh, handling this form post. Uh, as well as like all of the other um, requests that our server is getting. Um, and then finally, for our rendering logic, we've got that uh, hanging out in here as well, again, on the server, um, where we determine, OK, which to-dos should we um, have displayed? And uh, are they all complete? So I can just, you know, determine whether to, uh, or how many um, posts to show, and that, that sort of thing. So that is our MPA. That's how that's all implemented. So there are a couple problems with this that motivated the next transition to the, the next wave of how we built web apps. Um, one problem with this is every time I make a new uh, to-do uh, or, or do any sort of mutation of any kind, uh, we're actually adding an entry into the history stack. So if I uh, click and hold here, uh, I could hit back, 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 back. Like, I mean, that's, is that a feature or a bug? I don't know. Like, maybe it's cool that I can see what, what did my to-dos used to look like uh, at some point. But I don't know. That's probably not the best user experience for something like this. The other thing is a full page refresh. Can you imagine if you had a full page refresh every time you favorited a tweet or like retweeted something? Or like, well, what nonsense is that? Nobody wants that. Um, and so, yeah, full page refresh is not going to work for a lot of use cases. And then also, uh, the pending UI for this is not great. I check on this, and then if I'm just looking at the app, uh, I, I'm not seeing what's going on, right? I, I have to look up at the favicon to see, oh, it's, it is responding to me. So there was a lot of motivation for us to make the user experience a bit better. Uh, also, like focus management, uh, animations, uh, animated transitions, stuff like that all motivated our move to the next phase. So this is what I lovingly call the PEMPA. I made that up. I don't think anybody's ever called it a PEMPA, um, but that's what we're going with. It's a progressively enhanced multi-page app. Um, and so actually, the server is almost identical to our previous server because it is progressively enhanced. It is not, so like it works. The baseline, what progression enhancement means is the baseline is functionality, like it, it works. And then the enhancement piece is like make it better, okay? So 
what we've done to make it better is down here in our template, we have a script for good old jQuery. Thank you, jQuery. How many have used jQuery? Yeah. Well, thank you, jQuery. Um, just helped us a lot. And then this todos.js. Uh, and that is, uh, lives here. We have this todos.js. And this, um, I should have the number of lines in here, but it's like maybe 200 lines of code, uh, is here to make our experience using the app a little better. So let's observe. Um, so everything still works. Hooray. So that's good. Um, but you'll notice that we are no longer getting uh, a favicon spinner. Instead, what we're getting is some inline feedback that stuff is going on. New to do. Uh, so we, you know, you, you could have designed this better than me um, to have like maybe there's a little spinner that goes in there or something. But um, the the point is that this is one of the reasons why we were motivated to move to progressive enhancement is now we can get rid of full page refreshes. We can have inline spinners and and all of that uh, to make it that much better. But there were some trade-offs uh, that uh, are associated to, uh, to this change. Uh, for one, holy smokes. <laughs> this was really hard to write, folks. Um, like, and when I found bugs and stuff, I ended up writing tests for my demo. So, <laughs> so uh, that shows you, shows you that. So let's, let's follow, the route, or follow the code here. So our data persistence for this app uh, we still have the db.js. That has not changed. Uh, so that's, that lives on the server. We're still responsible for writing that. Um, our routes um, still configured inside of our uh, server.js. But because we don't want full page refreshes, this is not only configured in our server.js, it's also, oh, actually, this is the wrong server.js. Here we go. Uh, it's not only configured in this server.js, but it's um, also configured in our todos.js, uh, where we have, where is it? Uh, nope, nope, nope. Isn't this like totally the way that it is though? Like where is that? Oh shoot, I don't know. Uh, here we are. Uh, my UI, UL filters on click. We're going to prevent default. We're going to do a push state to their href path name. Um, and then I'm going to update the UI because, you know, this is an important thing that happens when I change routes is this active filter. Ah, yeah. So we've, we've got some duplication there. Uh, okay, what about our uh, data fetching for our reads? So uh, because we're still server rendering, it's still important that this works uh, without this enhanced JavaScript. Um, all of that data fetching is still in our, um, in our server code here. Uh, so that, that is unchanged. Um, however, uh, one other thing that we, that when it comes to data mutations, is we're like sort of fetching here when we make these mutations because we uh, make this fetch re request to make the, um, uh, perform the request so that we're not getting the full page refresh, but it's gonna send us back the updated to do so we can update our UI. So that's like sort of a mix of fetching um, because we're getting some data back from the server. Um, and so yeah, as far as our data mutations, like all of this stuff exists. And like, look at this, How, is this like, bringing nightmares back to anybody else, like what, holy smokes. Like it wasn't long before frameworks like Backbone and stuff started showing up because like this was not fun at all. Um, so, uh, and, and the reason that we had to have all of this code is because of this, event prevent default. So this code existed in our MPA, it did. We just didn't have to write it. It all lived inside the browser. The browser handled all this stuff and it did it way better than we're doing. <laughs> like way better because we're not handling form resubmissions. So if like I change it and then I change it again or like their race conditions, like there are so many, like please nobody show this to David Korshid of X State because he would just like cry tears of sadness of how um, error prone this code is. And, the, and the, this is like totally resembles the kind of code that I wrote at, during this phase of uh, application development. I showed up right at toward the end of this phase. So that's when I started in web development. It was toward the end of this phase of web development. Um, so yeah, that, that was a pain. And then our rendering logic is also spread across multiple places. So of course, we still have our HTML um, in here. And you notice we, we actually have this little utility function called render list item, and we have some utility functions for our icons. Um, but uh, our todos.js also has that exact same code. 
And so this is another thing that we had to do a lot in this day it was uh, duplicate templates. Um, and often our templates, again, were not written in JavaScript. They were written in some other completely different language. And we had to figure out how to, you know, when you create a new item, you got to have the, the HTML that you're going to use to generate that um, on the client. Um, and so, yeah, this, this was a, a, there were a lot of challenges with this uh, phase. And so uh, that's why it wasn't too long before uh, Backbone came out and then uh, AngularJS and Ember and React. And that's where we got into the spa phase, single page apps. Because it was such a pain, we're like, you know, forget this. I'm just going to go full on. Everything is in the client. And this is where we kicked progressive enhancement to the curb. So if I uh, disable JavaScript, um, then I get this little message, you need to enable JavaScript to run this app. Probably crying emoji or something. So we decided, you know what, it's complicated enough, let's just put everything over on the client. Now, again, like, nobody's going to disable their JavaScript, so like, it was pretty okay, but there were a lot of uh, other problems that are associated to uh, your app not being progressively enhanced. And we'll talk about those a little bit. So let's continue with our game of follow the code. Whoops, I messed up. And we'll bring up our Create React app. How many of you are using Create React app in production right now? Yeah, a number of you. No shame, no shame, it's fine. Um, yeah, I hate creating my own Webpack config too. Okay, so we, we do still have a server. So we're not getting rid of the server. If you're going to have, like, uh, our persistence is still server side. Um, you know, if you've got a database, you've got to have some way to talk to the server. Um, even, even if the app that you're building, you're using third-party services, guess where their code is running? That's running on the server, too. So, like, you're not going to get away from server-side stuff unless you're building an in-browser game or something like that, which most of us are not. Um, but in this case, now we have this cores middleware. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the world of sadness. Uh, so we've got our cores. Um, we've got our body parser for JSON, because now we're submitting JSON. Um, we have a put for to-dos and delete and gets and all. Like, we've got our API routes now. This is completely, uh, actually, this, this was necessary for um, our Pempa as well. Uh, I didn't show that, but it was. Because if you're going to be doing fetches, uh, then you need to have API routes for those fetches. Uh, so we've got those, but we no longer have any rendering happening on the server. It's all happening on the client. And then we have our source directory. We have our app. This is where our routes are, uh, all configured with React Router. Um, quick raise of hands. How many people are using React Router right now? Yeah, that looks about right. It's about 70% of apps that are using React are using React Router. Um, and that seems consistent here. Uh, we have our icons. These are the components now, so that's nice. And then our routes. Um, and this is cool. Uh, we got um, a co-location of our CSS and our JavaScript. There were like a bunch of really cool things that we got out of this, uh, this transition. We did lose a lot of things too, though. Um, but let's take a look at, uh, wow, what is this nonsense? That is something we did not have to do before. Um, we didn't see it in our uh, Pempa, but it was there, we did have state. We just relied on it in the DOM, and we just like queried the DOM to know what the state of things are. Uh, there's actually a, a framework now called Quick that is actually kind of bringing that idea back, but in a good way. Um, it was not a good way with Pempas. Um, so now we're the ones managing the state uh, for all, all of the stuff that the browser used to do for us. Uh, here's where we're doing our, our data fetching. Um, yeah, this is not good, right? A use effect that just does a fetch and just like forgets about it. Where's the error handling? Um, we, we do have some pending states, so that's nice. So if, if you watch this closely, um, then you'll see it has a, an initial state that's uh, opaque or opacity of you know, 0.5 or something, just to show some sort of uh, feedback to the user. So that, that's nice. Although um, the initial HTML, uh, this should be kind of familiar for folks. There's nothing here. 
So the user, what they're looking at is just a white screen until our JavaScript loads, but that's okay. We're behind a login screen or something, so no big deal. Or we're not, and we just don't care about SEL for some reason. Um, so yeah, we're, we lost a couple of things in this transition, but we got a lot. Like it, This is way, way simpler than uh, our, our PEMPAs of the past, the JavaScript sprinkles, way, way easier. Uh, okay, so let's look also um, for our data mutations. We do still have forms. We, we continue to use forms, but uh, we also continue to prevent defaults. So we're not using the forms as they um, are intended because, again, we don't want a full page refresh. We want to control pending states. And uh, so now we're doing these fetches. Again, not handling errors at all. Like the, this code would kind of, kind of explode if we started properly handling errors. Uh, but this is especially early days of React and, and all the frameworks. This is kind of how we did it, except we used um, XHR. <laughs> so um, I, I cheated and used it, uh, fetch and promises and stuff. Um, and then for, and these just make uh, fetch requests method post uh, application JSON, sending the, the JSON. Um, and then for our rendering logic, that all lives uh, here as well. So all of the code still exists, and each phase, we're taking more and more of what the browser does onto ourselves and doing it worse than the browser did, which is a shame. Um, but again, there was motivation. There was a reason we decided we wanted to do this. Uh, okay, so there, um, I, I want to show a couple of other like iterative steps that were not like full-on transitions, but um, are like improvement. Oh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention about this, well, yeah, this, this is kind of goes into that is none of us are writing, well, most of us, <laughs> hopefully, are not writing our code quite like this, right? We're probably using something like React Query or uh, use SWR or something like that because it like drastically supplies this. So you're like, Kent, you're saying this is so hard, but it's not. I just use React Query and now it's all fine. Well, that's great. I also recommend React Query. Um, I think it's awesome. At the same time, that code does still exist, and it is still in the browser, and it is something that we have to, to think about as web developers. Um, and so in, in this next example, this is not a transition, but it is a slight change. With uh, React Router version 6.4, you have this Create Browser Router, which is a data router, um, and it handles not only um, the routing, but also data um, and, um, yeah, like loading of data. And so now, with that, uh, we have this loader that's responsible for loading our data. Now errors are actually properly handled and race conditions and all of that stuff. Uh, we have our action right here. This actually should resemble something we've seen before, right? This actually looks a lot like the backend code that we had in our um, initial implementation of the MPA, except we still um, were uh, having to do this fetch request and everything, but a lot of this should, uh, is pretty similar to what we had before. So uh, this, this still exists on the client. We're still responsible for it. Um, pretty much everything from here on down is, this, um, is using React routers, use fetchers and stuff, so we can have uh, a better uh, experience for showing pending states and stuff like that. It's like way easier. And also, I even added error states, because why not? It was a lot easier uh, with with the way that this is implemented. So that was an iterative change. And then uh, this is actually, this next one I want to show is nothing like what we've done before. No, nobody is doing this as far as I'm aware. Um, but it actually gets us pretty close to what we're going to, what this next transition is. So this is almost the same, like everything below here is the same as the last one. But the action has changed. And all this action is doing is it's saying, hey, I want you to take the, the form that is being submitted and just send it along. Like, just keep it going. Uh, this is where it's going to go to my API route. And so now my server is over here, and it has this handle form post again. So we're right back to our MPA. We just have this exact same uh, MPA route because our client has now decided to do what the browser would have done if it hadn't prevented default. Our client is now emulating the browser. It's doing what the browser would have done. And so we can handle that. And it, it's, like, of course, slightly different. But the, um, the idea is that we get this progressively enhanced behavior without having, uh, uh, having to completely change our mental model for how this works. Um, this phase of SPA, um, a lot of people who have been doing web for a really long time 
uh, really struggle with it because they're like, it, this used to be so easy. Like, there was, it was not that hard. I mean, we couldn't do all the really cool, fancy things we can do now with spas, but like, as far as building it and getting something, and like being productive, getting something uh, shipped, that was way easier. Uh, and now we have state management, and state management is what makes uh, shipping spas so difficult. So our next transition is what I like to call the PESPA. It sounds like Vespa from Luca. How many of you have seen Luca? Yeah, I love Luca. Luca's great. Um, so in Luca, they have the villain has this Vespa, and the kids really, really want to get a Vespa. So that's what I think of when I think of PESPA. So it's a progressively enhanced single-page app. And what defines a PESPA is the functionality is a baseline. So no longer is it okay for us to say, hey, you need to enable JavaScript, or here's your white screen, or maybe if we thought about it like a loading spinner until the data shows up, we're going to say, no, the app works. We, the browser knows how to do all this stuff. We're, we may be borrow or like taking responsibilities on ourselves, but uh, the browser is helping us to do this, uh, or, or we're just um, implementing um, what the browser has done on top of uh, what the browser does already. Uh, lazy loading and intelligent prefetching. Um, so we're going to, um, th this is an another important aspect to this because we do want to bring in our, um, our JavaScript, but we don't want it to take over the entire like, user's network, right? Um, and our apps are, are quite large, so we're going to lazy load, and, um, but also prefetch, so it feels like the entire application has been uh, downloaded already. It moves code over to the server as much as possible. Anything that can be on the server should be. Uh, no manual duplication of U UI code like we had in our PEMPA stage. And uh, transparent browser emulation. So as far as I'm concerned, I should feel like I'm relying on the browser. I, I shouldn't feel like I have to write code that the browser does for me. Um, and, and that can happen with a library. A library can do that. Like somebody's got to write that code. But um, I should feel like, as a, the developer, that I don't have to, to manage that. And um, uh, for both my front end and back end code, it should feel, uh, I, I should have the mental model of a multi page app. So I am actually out of time, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. This actually isn't all super important, uh, the rest of this, um, because all I want to talk about is uh, the fact that uh, we are entering a new phase. So this is the way that it looks like. Um, I'm showing you uh, this with Remix because I love Remix and it's amazing. How many, anybody here deploying an app with Remix, like a production app? Okay, a couple of you. How many are working on it? Okay, a couple more. This is good. How many people are interested in it? A lot more. That's even better. Great. Uh, so Remix is the only framework that I'm aware of that um, can do uh, or implements the ideas of what I'm calling a PESPA. Um, but uh, there are other frameworks that are following along. So SvelteKit is also implementing these concepts as well as Solid Start, um, and others I'm sure are going to follow soon because it's really, really solid concepts. So uh, data, the, uh, I've only been showing you this because I'm, I'm uh, trying to illustrate that data never changes. You are always going to have data persistence happening on the server. You cannot avoid that. I don't care how much you're like, well, I want to be able to scale or what, you know, whatever. You're always going to have stuff running on the server. Okay? So we're, we're going to have our data there. Um, our uh, icons and server, we've got our client. Um, we've got our root right here. But there's no configuration of routes because in uh, Remix, it's uh, convention-based routing. That is not important for the PESPA, but the routing still exists. Uh, it's just in convention. And then our uh, to-dos here. We still have that loader. But this only runs on the server. Okay, so no more are we doing like a fetch request to an API route. Those API routes are gone. No more API routes. Hooray. Uh, so that's our loader. And this is our action. It looks very familiar uh, to what we had before. And again, this is only on the server. No client side code for this action. Uh, and then our to-dos route. In fact, everything else is the same as it was with our React router implementation of this. Um, because it's, yeah, it's just the same. Um, except I forgot, this should actually be way better if we do that. Yeah, that's nice. So we, we get nice type safety front to back, from the, all the way from the database to the UI, which is really awesome. Um, 
And uh, Remix is going to manage the code splitting for us. It's going to manage the um, network requests for us. And our mental model is still like we're building an MPA. That's how it feels. And it's that uh, simple and straightforward. And that's what makes it so great. Um, and then we get to progressively enhance with uh, JavaScript. So we still have pending UI and stuff like that. Uh, and that is our, our PESPA. So to wrap things up, because I'm already over time, and I apologize in advance for that. Um, transitions involve both the front end and the back end. Uh, and it it's primarily uh, revolves around the code and where it lives, who wrote it, um, and who maintains that, and, and where it's running. Um, every transition had motivation. So we, uh, we shouldn't look at old transitions and be like, oh, that was garbage. Like, we didn't know anything. We actually don't know anything about the future either. So um, that, that's another thing is every transition comes with trade-offs, and we're often unaware of how, like, we, we know what the trade-offs are often, but we are unaware of, uh, unaware of how big the impact will be. Uh, so we're still learning stuff. Uh, we're still kind of in the honeymoon phase of uh, progressively enhanced single page apps. Um, but I can tell you that this improves UX and DX at the same time, and it's brilliant. The last thing I want to say to you is, you're amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kent. That was an amazing talk. I hope you all loved it as much as I did. Yeah. One more round of applause. Yeah. React, 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 react.